There have been many aircraft that have been designed and produced since the dawn of aviation. Some designs never left the drawing board, others were only built once, some put into small production runs, and other designs have had quite significant production runs. In this video we will count down the top 10 most produced aircraft in aviation history. The Piper J3 Cub Starting our list off as the 10th most produced aircraft in history is the Piper J3 Cub, with some 19,888 being produced by Piper throughout a production run that lasted from 1937 to 1947. This trainer and sports aircraft was so popular post World War II that at its peak Piper had a J3 Cub coming off the production line every 10 minutes. Additionally, 5,677 modified J3 Cubs were purchased by the US Army, seeing action throughout the Second World War as a reconnaissance, ambulance and supply aircraft. The Fokker Wolf FW-190 The Fokker Wolf FW-190 was one of Germany's best frontline fighters during the Second World War. When it first appeared in September 1941, it caused much concern as it was virtually superior in every way to the Supermarine Spitfire Mark V's then in use by the Allies. It wasn't until the Allies introduced the Spitfire Mark IX in late 1942 did they have a fighter that was comparable to the FW-190. Over 20,000 Fokker Wolf FW-190s were produced in a variety of models including specially designed fighter-bomber versions. Polycarpov PO-2 it is unsure how many of this Russian biplane was built, with sources usually giving an estimate that ranged between 20,000 to 40,000. Designed in the later half of the 1920s, it was originally intended as a crop duster and trainer, and was said to be a very forgiving aircraft that was difficult to put into a tailspin. A speed of 95 miles per hour could be reached with a range of 250 miles on unarmed versions. Even though it was well and truly outdated at the beginning of the war, the PO-2 would be utilised by the Soviets in a range of roles from transport, reconnaissance and its most famous as a light night bomber. Its slow flying capabilities allowed it to fly at extremely low altitudes while being able to deliver great bombing precision. Its extremely short takeoff and landing capabilities also made it a useful tool on the battlefield. The PO-2 was the aircraft that the famous female pilots of the 46th Taman Guards Night Bomber Aviation Regiment, nicknamed the Night Witches by the Germans, flew. Production finished in 1954, while the North Koreans did utilise it during the Korean War. The Supermarine Spitfire Seafire One of the most famous aircraft of the Second World War, the Spitfire was the design work of R.J. Mitchell. Originally designed to carry a Rolls-Royce Ghost Shark engine and designated Type 300, the Air Ministry rejected the design and it wasn't until a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine was installed that the Air Ministry became interested. The prototype took to the air for the first time on the 5th of March 1936. Unfortunately, R.J. Mitchell passed away on the 11th of June 1937, only seeing the plane fly once, and would be succeeded by Joseph Smith. The Spitfire ended service with the RAF in August 1938, and would not retire from service with the RAF until some 14 years later in 1952. Throughout World War II, the Spitfire would become a significant and vital asset for the Allies. During the Battle of Britain, alongside its contemporary the Hawke Hurricane, it helped defend the skies of Britain. It eventually saw service in all theatres of war, although conditions in the Pacific limited its abilities as an effective interceptor. The Seafire was a development of the Spitfire that had been specially designed for carrier-based operations. Main differences included a raster hook, local fuselage strengthening and later versions of the Seafire had folding wings. Production ended in 1949 with some 24 different variants being produced and between the Spitfire and the Seafire over 23,000 were produced. The Cessna 182 Based on the Cessna 180, the single engine all metal Cessna 182 was first introduced in 1956 and since then, many variants and versions of this aircraft have been produced. In 1958, Cessna released the Deluxe version of the 182, dubbed the Skylane, and in 1976, the Skylane became the standard model after the base 182 was dropped from production. 
The C variant, released in 1960, introduced a new 35 degree swept tail, and 1977 heralded the introduction of a retractable undercarriage version. In 1986, Cessna stopped production of all single engine aircraft, including the 182. However, production of the 182 would resume in 1997, although the retractable undercarriage version was not resumed. Still in production at time of the making of this video, over 23,200 have already been produced. The Cessna 150 152. The Cessna 150 was designed off the Cessna Model 140, with the tail dragger configuration of the Model 140 changed to a nose gear configuration. Initially designated Model 142, six days later, for reasons unknown, the designation was changed to Cessna 150. Released in 1957, the Cessna 150 would stay in production until 1977, with some 23,839 of all types being built. In 1966, the type underwent a significant restyling, which included changing the vertical stabilizer to be 35 degrees swept back, and this year also marked the beginning of production of C-150s at Reims Aviation in Reims, France. 2,452 C-150s were produced by Reims Aviation. Throughout its production career, the Cessna 150 would only feature one power plant, the 100 horsepower four cylinder Continental O200. An aerobatic version, the A150K Aerobat, was introduced in 1970. The Cessna 150 would evolve into the Cessna 152, which was unveiled in 1978 and was originally powered by a 110 horsepower Lycoming O235 engine. The C152 also introduced changes i.e. a widened cabin, to help deal with pilots becoming bigger and heavier. In 1985, the last C-152 came off the production line, with some 6,927 examples in various formats being produced. That means, in total, over 30,700 C-150s, C-152s were built. The Piper PA-28 series. Coming in at number 4 on the list, is a Piper PA-28 series of aircraft. There are around 24 different models in the series, including the Cherokee, Cherokee Warrior, Cherokee Archer, Cherokee Pathfinder, Dakota, Cherokee Arrow, and the Turbo Arrow. Designed by Fred Wyke, John Thorpe, and Carl Bergery, the design was introduced to replace the PA-22 Trip Acer and Colt, as well as give Piper a modern low-cost aircraft to compete against the Cessna 172. The prototype first flew on January 14, 1960, and deliveries began in early 1961. Still in production today, over 32,700 have been produced so far. The BF-109 The BF-109 was a design work of Willy Messerschmitt on behalf of the Bayerische Flugzeugwerke AG BFW, in response to a 1934 specification issued by the German Ministry of Aviation the RLM, for design to replace a Heinkel HE-51 and Arado 68 fighter planes. The first prototype took to the skies during September 1935, during which it was powered by a British Rolls-Royce Kessel engine. For the time, the BF-109 was extremely modern, being an all-metal monoplane with retractable undercarriage and enclosed cockpit. It was originally given the designation BF, however, in 1938, BFW was bought out by Willy Messerschmitt, and changed to Messerschmitt AG. The type then received the designation ME-109, however it seems official documents all throughout the war still kept with the BF designation. The type's first service was during the Spanish Civil War, where valuable combat data and experience was gained. When the Germans decided to invade Poland in September 1939, the BF-109 was greatly utilised and were easily able to outclass the Polish frontline fighters at the time. During the invasion of France the following year, it would similarly see much success against the defenders. It wasn't until the Battle of Britain did it finally meet its match in the Supermarine Spitfire. The BF-109 would again be heavily utilised throughout the German invasion of Russia and against the Red Air Force it would have its greatest success. The top fighter ace in history, Eric Hartmann, flew the BF-109 and achieved 352 kills all on the Eastern Front. At the end of the war, the BF-109 still remained the most numerous fighter aircraft in the Luftwaffe. Czechoslovakia produced the BF-109 under licence until 1949, and post-war they were built in Spain by Hispano until 1958. 
the Hispano version had the fitment of the Rolls-Royce Merlin as their engine. In total, approximately 35,000 BF-109s were built. The Aleutian IL-2 Number 2 on the list is the Russian designed and built Aleutian IL-2 ground attack aircraft. Throughout the 1930s, the Soviets had shown great interest in specially designed anti-tank aircraft, and in 1938, in response to a government request, a design team led by Sergei Aleutian produced a new two-seat aircraft to fulfill such a requirement. Two prototypes were ordered, receiving the designation TSKB-55. Powered by a 1370 horsepower Mikulim AM-35 V-12 engine, the first prototype flew for the first time during October 1939. Testing revealed a few issues and changes were made, including changing the aircraft to be a single-seater and the installation of the more powerful 1680 horsepower AM38 engine. Armament for the new aircraft featured two 7.62mm machine guns and two 20mm cannons, the ability to carry bombs and up to eight rockets, making it one of the first aircraft to carry rockets. The IL-2's forward fuselage was covered in armour plating, helping to achieve great robustness and strength when in combat. When Germany began their invasion of the USSR on the 22nd of June 1941, only 249 IL-2's had been built, of which only 70 were in service, and only 20 had been delivered to field units. First combat was seen on the 27th of June 1941, when five IL-2s attacked a convoy of German tanks and mechanised infantry. Combat proved that due to the low altitude nature of its attacks, the IL-2 was vulnerable to fighter attack from above, and thus plans were drawn up to install a rear gunner into the aircraft. These two-seater versions began appearing on assembly lines during September 1942, and also boasted a more powerful engine. In late 1943, an improved version of the two-seater appeared, incorporating a new swept wing, improving stability and control. By the war's end, some 17,000 of these swept wing versions had been produced. The IL-2 proved to be a very effective ground attack aircraft and became an extremely important and significant aircraft in the Soviets' campaign against the Germans. When production ended, some 36,000 examples had been built, making it the most produced military aircraft in history and the second most produced aircraft in history. The Cessna 172 Coming in at number one on the list of the most produced aircraft is the Cessna 172, with over 44,000 having been produced and still counting. The story of the 172 begins in January 1945, during which Cessna began test flying the newest version of their 170 tail dragger aircraft. Designated the 170C, it introduced a 145 horsepower Continental O300A engine, as well as larger elevators and a more angular fin. Cessna then changed the tail dragger undercarriage to a tricycle configuration and redesignated the aircraft Cessna 172. The 172 prototype first flew on the 12th of June 1955, and the first production models were offered for sale the following year. It proved to be an immediate success, with 1,174 being manufactured throughout 1956. Throughout 1958, the flight endurance record would be broken twice by pilots flying Cessna 172s. The first started in August 1958 and saw pilots Jim Heath and Bill Burkhart fly their Cessna 172 for 50 days, setting at the time the record for the longest flight. This was then bettered by pilots Robert Tim and John Cook, who taking off in their 172 on the 4th of December 1958, will remain aloft for some 64 days, 22 hours and 19 minutes, a record that stands to this day. In 1960, a new swept tail was introduced, and in 1964, the mechanical flaps were replaced with electric flaps. Additionally, in 1964, the US Air Force ordered 170 172Fs, another 34 were ordered in 1967, designated T-41A Mescalero and utilised for preliminary pilot screening when service commenced in 1965. This was followed a few years later by the T-41B, which was bought by the US Army. Based on the Cessna R-172E and contained a 210 horsepower Continental IO-360 engine and constant speed propeller. 
The T-41C was the same as the T-41B and utilised by the Air Force, while the T-41D was the export version. Around the world, civilian C-172s have also been pushed into military service. Today, it is said some 24 nations still operate some form of the 172. In 1968, Cessna upgraded the 172's power plant to the Lycoming 150 horsepower engine, and in the late 60s, Cessna launched the deluxe version of the 172, dubbed the Skyhawk. The engine was further upgraded in 1981 to 160 horsepower, and between 1981 and 1985, a retractable undercarriage version could also be purchased. In 1986, due to issues with insurance and legal liability, Cessna stopped production of all single-engine aircraft, including the 172. It would be 10 years before Cessna resumed production of the 172. Since 1998, the 172S has been the primary production model and still is as of 2022, being powered by a 180 horsepower Lycoming IO360 L2A engine. At the time of recording, the 172 is still in production with only the Lockheed C-130 Hercules having had a longer production run. The Cessna 172 is a popular aircraft, most pilots have probably flown one, and is perhaps one of the most successful aircraft in history. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to go leave a like and subscribe for future videos. In the meantime, keep flying high.